All right. Here's a look at Malcolm. I uh, had an ex-girlfriend, a hot ex-girlfriend, give me this as a birthday present. Second best birthday present she ever gave me. If you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway. Mm, okay, let's start. Uh, Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell. Mm. <clears throat> His middle books are called The World of Mathematics by James R. Newman. And on the right, I have the whole collection is called Pax Britannica, but the middle book is also called Pax Britannica, Pax, the, the uh, right, the uh, British piece, like Pax Romana. Uh, Heavenly Command is the first book, Pax Britannica, the second book, and Farewell the Trumpets, the third book. Mm. I forget who puts this out. Let me, let me, who wrote this? Oh, here we go. James Morris. Maybe you can't see it because of the glare, but here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Now let's get down to the second shelf here. Mm. Okay, this is a recent pickup. This is Mortimer Adler's Great Ideas program. These are in great condition. Like, better than very good. Almost like new. I'm really lucky to have uh, found a, found them in this condition. The only thing is this last book has like a, it's misprinted like the you know when you when you copy something on the Xerox machine and or the copy machine and you kind of copy it sideways and you don't get the whole thing on there. Like the first few pages of the preface are like that. But other than that the rest of the book is and I almost said fucking perfect but it, yeah there's no need for that. It's perfect. So this is what I'm currently going to follow. Right? I've always, you know, like everybody else, like, you ever get that feeling like, oh, I should have read that when I was in college. Or I didn't, my, my education isn't as thorough as I, you know, I, I, I wish, I, I hope for it to have been. Anyway, kind of like midlife crisis stuff. This is Mortimer Adler's uh, great, again, uh, great ideas program. I'm repeating myself. Um, and these books cover... Um, each book has like a, a reading list of 15 books to cover and it gives you a little synopsis of the things you should be thinking about and questions that you should be thinking about um, when you read those books. So it's kind of a guide. It's a self-study guide to a liberal arts education. Uh, the first one is the introduction. An introduction to the great books and to a liberal education. Mm. The second book is The Development of Political Theory and Government. So Locke, um, I don't know who else, Burke maybe. Foundations of Science and Mathematics, definitely Plato. Uh, okay, sorry. Foundations of Science and Mathematics. I haven't really looked through these, so I don't know. I know some of the authors that are on them, on, on their list. Religion and Theology. Philosophy of Law and Juris Jurisprudence. Imaginative Literature 1, and number 7 is Imaginative Literature 2. Mm, okay. Uh, you can see back there I have uh, Maggie, A Girl of the Streets by Stephen Crane. Uh, the Ethics, A Study of Moral Values. Aristotle's going to be there. Spinoza will be there. Biology, Psychology, and Medicine. Freud will be in the psychology. I don't know who else will be there. <clears throat> and philosophy. Uh, Plato will be here. Uh, I think Aristotle will be here. I know Locke, Berkeley, and Hume will be there. Mm, I don't know who else. Okay, more. Uh, I have I have uh, Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five back there. I don't want to pull out the books in the back. I'm not going to. So, if you're if you want me to do that, then. You will be disappointed. Okay, so Plato's Republic. This is a nice translation by GMA Group. I just happened upon this at a bookstore. Mm. I bought this within like the last two or three months, and I hadn't bought a philosophy book in a long time. Uh, anyway, so I got this book. It's really good. Uh, I'm probably going to start reading it in a couple of days. This book here is The Five Books of Moses 
by Robert Alter. Uh, Robert Alter put out a new translation of the Old Testament, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew Bible, right? The Torah. Mm, it's really good. Like I'm no scholar, but the reading is really good. Mm, I've, and I've seen enough videos of him to realize, I mean, to know that he's obviously a very well respected um, translator of the Old Testament. This is the paperback edition, um, but I have the hard, I have the hardback books. There's three of them. Um, they're in the living room, so I won't name them because I can't remember the names anyway. So this is the first book, uh, and I picked up this one by accident, I think. Like, I forgot that I, I forgot that I had ordered this, and then I picked up the hardcover. But either way, this is a good one that I'll read, and so I won't mess, mess up my, my hardcover one. Henry James. Uh, you gotta read Henry James. This is a small book, The Beast in the Jungle. More Henry James. Washington Square. <laughs> great story, great writing. One of the most, one of the more accessible Henry James books. Then you see I have the Library of America. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, collection. So these are the complete stories, 1864 to 1874. These are the complete stories, 1874 to 1884. Complete stories, 1884 to 1891. Henry James. Complete stories, 1892 to 1898. And complete stories 1898 to 1910. You can see I'm a Henry James fan. Okay, more. Or I just like collecting his books. I can't really prove that I'm a fan, but uh, you have to take my word for it. You have to. Next, Henry James. The Wings of a Dove. Okay. Now, uh, Wings of the Dove is also pretty accessible, Henry James. And I say accessible because Henry James has a really high vocabulary, like, and his writing style, he has a, he has a, he has a writing style you have to get used to. Um, he phrases things in a way that you probably haven't really seen. Uh, so, but once you do, then it, it, it's not hard to, like, process what he's trying to tell you. Well, look out there. Top three American authors. Her and James. Her and James, to me, probably belong in the top, definitely top five, probably top three. Uh, collected stories. Uh, Willa Cather, Death Comes for the Archbishop. George Eliot, Middlemarch. Mm. Another George Eliot, The Mill on the Floss. Um, what's this book here? It's on the top here. Oh, this is kind of misplaced. The Ameri American Exceptionalism by Charles Murray. Yeah. Fuck you, Barack Obama. American exceptionalism is real. It's not some watered-down version that you made it out to be. Okay, Thomas More. These are Thomas More Utopia. These are the old... Uh, I forget what these series is. Is this Library of America too? No, I forget. Nah, I'll open it up. Maybe it is. Uh, sorry, I'm going to... I just want to see who is... And never mind. I forget what this series is. Sorry for the filming here. It's kind of crappy. Meditation, Marcus Aurelius. Great stuff. Lucretius on the nature of things. You ha you probably have to know it if you want to learn Western, civiliza Western civilization. Praise of Folly, Erasmus. You got to know it. Uh, Henry Esmond by Thackeray. I don't think you have to know that one. And then I have Dreiser. Uh, I have Sister Carrie, uh, Jenny Gerhardt, Journey Gerhardt, and Twelve Men. Mm. Okay. So, this is a lot of literature, obviously. Um, it's not just... I think it's... A lot of this is the Western canon stuff. Like, if you did a Western canon program, kind of like the one I just talked about with uh, Mor Mortimer Adler, a lot of these authors... Def all of these authors would be there. But not all of the books you probably have to read. Okay, well, I don't know why I'm fixing this. Let's just go to the next shelf. I can do that later. Okay. Um, I like these books on, like, education. And this is a good book. The Trivium. Uh, this is by Sister Maryam Joseph. Uh, the Liberal Arts of Logic, Grammar, and Rhetoric. Right? This is what you were supposed to learn when you were taught 
uh, liberal arts, when you were given a liberal arts education, right? Uh, tenured radicals, how politics has corrupted our higher education. Okay, this is by Roger Kimball from the New Criterion fame. Higher superstition, the academic left and its quarrels with science. Uh, these guys, uh, Gross and Levitt, are really polemical writers. And they're good. They're good writers. Uh, I'd recommend this if you want to, like, there's a whole bunch of books you can read on how our academies are all fucked up, how the how the universities are have been corrupted already. They're, it's, they're, they're not salvageable anymore. You can, you'd have to fire, like, 90% of the faculty and, and to, to fix them, especially the Ivy Leagues. I, the Ivy Leagues are shit. I wouldn't even go to an Ivy League school, if, you know, if I had the option. I'd go somewhere like uh, Hillsdale College or maybe even Thomas Aquinas College or one of the great, great book societies colleges. I think Syracuse is a great book society college. Um, anyway, next. Richard Wright, The Unfinished Quest by Michael Faber. This is the Three Musketeers, right? So Alexander Dumas. This is a biography on Dostoevsky, uh, A Writer's Life by Gare. Uh, that's gonna be tough. Jetsa, Gare Jetsa. Let's let's go with that. This is Dostoevsky. Which which book is this? Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Gulliver's Travels, Jonathan Swift. Some Sophocles, Oedipus the King, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. Cynthia Ozick, good writer, serious writer, The Cannibal Galaxy. The Philosophy of Bertrand Russell. The Philosophy of Bertrand Russell is satire. It helps if you've read Russell, but even if you haven't, <laughs> you would appreciate the satire. This is Philip Jordan or Jordan. Let's see if I can read you a typical excerpt or a typical chapter. Let me find a short one. I know which one I want to read. Here we go. I found it. Yes, I found it. Okay. I'm going to read you this. I'm going to try to read uh, by keeping the camera focused on the... That's not going to happen. Okay. Maybe this is the best. Yeah, but I can't read through the... Mo I can't read... I can't read from the monitor, so... It might be a little difficult here for me to read okay i'm gonna give it a try so is the mind in the head so a little philosophy of mind for you for bertrand russell or <laughs> an imitation of bertrand russell the contrary opinion has been maintained by idealists and a certain election agent with whom i once had to deal and who remarked that something slipped his mind and then went out of his head altogether at some period then a remembrance was in his head and out of his mind his mind was not then wholly within his head also one is sometimes assured that with certain people out of sight is out of mind what is in their minds is therefore in sight and cannot therefore be inside their heads <laughs> yeah 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 it's supposed to sound ridiculous right it's supposed to sound ridiculous comical farcical um, like if you've ever done philosophy and try to follow like a philosophical train of thought and you, and you get lost, you like, like you can get lost within the same sentence. Like, what the hell? How did I get here? Like, how is this supposed to follow? Or just, even if you follow the words and you're like, this makes no sense. Mm, this is this book. It, to me, it's funny. Like, anyway, you, you'd have to read it for yourself. Okay, more Dostoevsky, notes from the underground. Uh, Faust, this is Goethe, right? Yeah, part one. Uh, Thomas Mann's Dr. Faustus, no relation to Faust. Uh, Sir Gawain or Sir Gowan in the Green Light, uh, sorry, in the Green Knight. This is a good translation, W.S. Merwin. Merwin also has another book. I forget what he translated, but he has another good book. Uh, but this is a good translation. This is my favorite translation. Okay, John Donne's poetry. These books here are Norton. Uh, I forget what these books are. Anyway, this is John Donne's poetry. Um, yeah. Selected and edited by Arthur L. Clements. 
I have more John Don. Same. Philip Larkin. I saw, we saw his biography earlier. This is miscellaneous pieces, 1955 to 1982. Mm. More poetry, poems of Catalyst by Charles Martin, translation. Selected poems are Rainer Maria Rilke, right? He's the one that wrote letters to a young poet. Here we go, more Rilke, Where Silence Reigns. Mm. Friedrich Holderlin. Holderlin, I believe, was Nietzsche's favorite poet. Selected poems translated by David Constantine. Collected poems of W.B. Yeats. I forgot Yeats was... Uh, who's... I think I think Langston Hughes. I think Yeats was Langston Hughes' favorite poet. I don't, uh, don't hold me to that. He was some black author's favorite poet. I want to say Langston Hughes, but I'm not certain anymore. It's been a long time since I read any black history or black authors or black poet. Anything in that genre. Uh, not that everything, like, I read only in genres, but it's been a while since I read that stuff. Uh, this is what? I don't know what this is. Give me a second. Oh, this is Ezra Pound, a collection of critical essays, edited by Walter Sutton. Okay, critical essays on Ezra Pound. John Ty John Tytell's Solitary Volcano by on Ezra Pound. Mm, good picture, right? Another, this is Noel Stock's biography on Ezra Pound. Uh, another good picture. I like the other one better. This is Fenolosa by Ezra Pound. Really short, right? Mm. Okay, then one, moving to one of my favorite authors. Uh, not that Ezra Pound's not a great author. He is. I just feel like I'm probably not able to understand him the man justice to give the man I'm not I'm not qualified to judge him I'm not qualified to judge Wordsworth I'm not qualified to judge Yates I'm not qualified to judge even Edgar Allan Poe who has a little bit more simpler style of writing uh yeah uh, 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 there's a whole bunch of poems but Cavafy is a little bit more accessible to me and I like Cavafy's writing I have a bunch of Poems. This is a complete poems of Cavafy. So the here to me the translator is the important thing. Different translators obviously are going to give you slightly different perspective. Uh, and sometimes I like to take like the translation part of the translation of one uh, translator and from the same poem and then mix it with the other translator because it just finds like I just like the wording sometimes like one word one word I, I prefer in one poem's translation than another word in another poem's translation. Okay, this is uh, by Ray Delvin. Translator. Um, next, C.B. Coffee, the Elected Poems. This is translated by Evangelo Sac Pereglu. That's terrible. I'm just let me put the name there so you can read it for yourselves. Hopefully, Sac Peroglu. Okay, that's the best I can do. More Cavafy. Cavafy's Alexandria. Edmund Keeley. This is a good. This is a good book. Mm. It, it gives you background on Kavafi. Uh, the complete poems by Kavafi, or right, Kavafi. This is by Ray Dalbert again. When an introduction by W. H. Auden. Okay. Then I found this book recently. The complete poems of Kavafi. This is by Daniel Mendelssohn. Mm, good translator. I like it. Uh, again, C. P. Kavafi collected poems. This is by Edmund Keeley and Philip Sherard. Translators, more work, more Kavafi collected poems. This is Achille and Sherard again, edited by George Savidis. I don't know what that has anything to do with it. More Philip Larkin collected poems. Uh, kind of, I should probably order these a little better. More Holderlin, yeah, Hymns and Fragments. I like this book. This is a good translation by Richard uh, Seiberth, S I E. Um, selected poems of Ezra Pound. T.S. Eliot collected poems, 
After Nature, W.G. Sebald or Sebald. I think it's Sebald. 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 Let's go with Sebald. Mm, I think he's a more contemporary author, right? And finally, oh, this is out of place, but The Great Tradition by F.R. Levis. 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 So good, good essayist, good commentator, good social commentator, uh, cultural criticism, stuff like that. I like I like that stuff. I have a lot of it, but it's uh, almost all in my living room. Okay. Oh my god. I'm sitting Indian style. And I'm obviously not an Indian. So I'm not going to cut it like that. Okay, how am I going to do this? This is really terrible. Oh, okay, here we go. Harold Bloom, the Western Canon. Right. Not to be confused with Alan Bloom. Um... Right, Harold Bloom. This is a good book. This is a similar idea to Mortimer Adler's um, Great Ideas program. Okay. Uh, I'm touching all the buttons here. I'm surprised I haven't shut this off. A Lifetime Reading Plan. Another reading plan book. I like these books. This is a Fatiman and Major Authors. Okay. Let's put this down here. Uh, Edwin A. Abbott, Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions. Uh, this is a good, <laughs> this is an interesting read. Um, they, the, the, their world here is all two, is two dimensional. Right, so the world that's being described in this book is, is two dimensional. Let that sink in for a little bit and it's worth the read. Arthur Miller, Death of a Salesman. There's nothing for me to say. Uh, Playing Away. This is a, so this is Michael Misha. This is one of those travel log books, but when they're done well, they're really entertaining. It's almost like a novel, and this is a good book. I remember enjoying this very much. Oh, this is this belongs to my Black History stuff. David Walker's appeal to the colored citizens of the world, but in particular and very expressly to those of the United States of America. Introduction by James Turner. This is a really strong. Um, this is a really strong how do i want to how do i want to classify this as like uh you know this is uh, slave 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 narrative something like that nah, i don't know how, i forget okay more frederick Douglass. all right Nar narrative of the life of frederick Douglass. i have two of those i have three of those i think enemy enemy of the people by ibsen Another Douglas, Frederick Douglas, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglas. Douglas has a really powerful voice. It's like almost everything he, you, he says, you believe. It's like, it's remarkable. Like, I can't doubt anything he says, which I really know I should, but because he's just an author, right? Okay, anyway, 12 Years a Slave, Solomon Northup. Um, okay. Uh, this is... Remember, you're a one ball. Who puts this out? This is Crispin? Crespin? Crespin. Who's the author? It's been a while. Uh, Quentin Crisp. Quentin S. Crisp. Unique writing style. I have another one of his books. Here it is. I'll just take it out. Um, Quentin Crisp, The Naked Civil Servant. Here's that book I talked about, The Lover, right? The North China Sea Lover. This is like the short version. Um, Marguerite Duras. La Rochefoucauld. Maxims. Good stuff. Some good maxims in there. This is a novel, Kulak, Love and Death, a German-Russian Tragedy, Ukraine, 1938. By Cleon Och Ochsner. Or Och, no, Och Ochsner. Yeah, let's go with that. Another another novel, Chaos and Night, Henry de Munterland, introduction by Gary Indiana. Gary Indiana? Somebody's parents had a sense of humor. Alexis de Tocqueville, Democracy's Guy, Joseph Epstein. I like Joseph Epstein. I have a bunch of Epstein books. I want to say something like close to 15 of his books. He's an essayist also. I wouldn't put him up there with the great intellectuals of American writing or American letters, but you don't have to be... Like, you don't have to be that to be a good author. And he, to me, is a good author. 
Okay, another Epstein book, which I would not have picked up because I don't really care for this title. It, it wouldn't have caught my interest, but I picked this up really cheap. Okay, so another Epstein book. The rest are in the living room, I believe. This is Letters of, not two, right? Yeah, Letters of Max Beerbaum. Uh, I'm a big Beerbaum fan. I recently started getting into letters. I never thought that would be something that would interest me, but now I'm starting to like it. Like, it gives you a, a different perspective and uh, into, like, the person's character. And you get a lot of, like, candid, more candid opinions in the letters than you would in, like, some of their major books. Another person who I like to collect because, not because I think he's, like, the greatest intellectual, the greatest, uh, like, um, voice political uh, in political philosophy, but Dinesh D'Souza is a warrior, right? He's out there fighting the fight. He's out there fighting for the cause. Um, I, I think he does a pretty good job. His, I think his movies could be better if he would stop narrating them. But the content is great. I just think he, they could be better products, right? Uh, I think Michael Moore d makes better movies, or at least... Like, Bowling for Columbine was a good movie. I, I've, I disagree with the political message. Obviously, it's a bunch of lies and, like, you know, half-truths. But you can't take away from, like, the production. The production-wise, he put out a good movie. And Dinesh could be b making better movies. But he's, like, he insists on being, like, the star of the show. Uh, not good, Dinesh. But... I will keep buying your books. Dinesh D'Souza, Death of the Nation. This is Plantation Politics and the Making of the Democratic Party. Pretty much he lays out how the lie that America was racist during the times of slavery. And he puts and he puts it mostly at the feet of Democrats, right? The Southern Plantation owners, the Dixiecrats, and and not just the Dixiecrats, but the Democrats in the North too that help, you know, support the system, right? To keep blacks to keep blacks in chains. Mm. Right, the, Demo the Democratic Party voted against freeing blacks. They voted against the Thirteenth Amendment. They voted against women's rights. They voted, they voted against women's suffrage in the Fourteenth Amendment. And for the most part, they voted against the Fifteenth Amendment to give blacks the right to vote. That was all Republican passed. Without the Republicans, those don't pass. Uh, and so Dinesh is out here spreading the gospel. Right? People don't want to read it. Right? People don't want to hear it. Just like nobody's no, nobody's reporting the terror read. Right, um, sexual assault charge against Joe Biden. Right, I think only one news organization has covered it, uh, and that was the Hill. And they're not, and they're a liberal rag. They're a liberal organization. Fox News fucking isn't even covering it. That fucking organization stopped being like Republican or conservative a long time ago. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, letters of to letters to a young conservative. Right. Okay, more. C.S. Lewis, uh, the monster, the man. The giant, the defender of the church, uh, discarded the discarded image. All right, Lewis. I think came, so. Lewis was famous for being like an atheist, and then he 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 converted, and in large part he was converted by reading G.K. Chesterton's *The Everlasting Man*. G.K. Chesterton is a is like, who oh, I would say top three in a man of letters, in, as a man of letters. I put him above Mencken, above Edmund Wilson, above Lionel Trilling. Mm. Yeah, this he, he just you got to read you got to read Chesterton. He's not read anymore. He's not he's not read in schools because he's a he's a Catholic, right? H Hilaire Belloc, historian, another kind of man of letters. He's not read in schools because he's a Catholic, right? And of course, the liberals are not going to assign their books. And part of the reason they don't assign their books, even though they claim to be for, for diversity, is because Chesterton and Belloc are just too intelligent for your fucking everyday school teacher or professor. They can't argue against them, so th they can't indoctrinate people. When you you can't indoctrinate somebody when you you give the other side's point of view, and the other side's point of view is more eloquent and stronger than yours. So they they're not taught anymore. That's the solution. The Liberal Imagination, Lionel Trilling, Essays on Literature and Society. I like Trilling. I don't agree with his politics, but he has a lot to say about authors. He has to say about society that's worth listening to, worth reading. And he's a good read, right, style-wise. Arthur Kostler. Mm, I've been meaning to get into Kostler. I haven't, but I picked up this book, which I've heard nothing but good things about. The Darkness at Noon, or Darkness at Noon. I always stick the word the everywhere. Anyway. The Words. This is Jean-Paul Sartre's autobiography. And it's a good autobiography. 
sorry, I hit the record button, so I don't know what I didn't record. Let's go back one. The Words by Jean-Paul Sartre. This is autobiography. It's a good autobiography. I recommend it. Um, Anti-Semite anti -Semite, uh, anti -Semite and Jew. I think this is another autobiography. Does he have two? I want to say he does. Okay, this is a good book too. I read this. I haven't read this, but I've been. I'm, it's 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 like eh, I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but I want to get to it. This is a biography on Turgenev by Henry Troyat. Troyat also put out a good book. Here it says it uh, on Chekhov, and he writes relatively short biographies, but they're really good. All right? Uh, okay. This is A. E. Hausman. I know you can't read it. I can't read it either, but I just know what it is. This is A. E. Hausman's The Shropshire Lad. Uh, Hausen's another old writer who probably deserves to be read still, but, yeah. You can't read him when you replace him with, with Amy Tan and Toni Morrison and Maya Angelou and Achebe. This is garbage, just garbage. Uh, Max Beerbaum, A Kind of Life. This is by John, Ta John Hall and John Hall. Good biography. Do -do -do. And Even Now by Max Beerbaum. Good stuff. Funny stuff. Thurber Country by James Thurber. Good stuff. Funny stuff. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but right, Ma Beerbaum is like my favorite humorist, and Thurber is a close second. And they both also do their own drawings, their own funny little drawings. Uh, this is Lanterns and Lances by Thurber. This is one of my favorite ones by Thurber. Okay, next. This is My World and Welcome to It by James Thurber. Mm. More Thurber. Thurber on Crime. What does that say? It says, No checks cashed. And then it says, If you want to raise hell, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. And my, and I'm starting to get sore here from my position. Uh, cha, that's what she said. I don't know. Oh, oh, I have to stretch. <laughs> this is gonna make good video. Me moaning and groaning because uh, I'm stiffer than Michael Jackson at a Chuck E. Cheese. The biography of Thurber by Burton Bernstein or Bernstein. I want to say Bernstein. James Thurber and his life. This is another one. Henry Kinney, Harrison Kinney biography. Uh, then we have Atlas Shrug by Ayn Rand, and The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. I like Ayn Rand as a novelist. I think she's got her. I think her political takes are generally right. Right, she's a libertarian for the most part. But she's not deep. Like, if you ever if you've ever tried to read her as a political philosopher, you're gonna be left wanting. If you want to understand liberalism, liberalism. If you want to understand libertarianism, if you want to understand, like, Ayn Rand's philosophy better than she understands it, read Isabel Patterson. Read the God of the Machine. Right, Patterson was basically Ayn Rand's mentor. Intellectually, Patterson's probably a nine, nine and a half, and Ayn Rand would be a five. Not to say she's, well, that's just relatively speaking, I'm just trying to show you the difference between Patterson and Rand when it came to understanding what the hell she was talking about. Okay, I have a bunch of books back there, I don't know, right, I have uh, Smith's uh, A Wealth of a Nation, I have some underground manga from Japan. What else is in here? I have some war books. The War with Japan. 30, day, 30 Days to a More Powerful Vocabulary. Mm, Tender is the Night by Fitzgerald. The Anti-Federalist Papers. What else? The Outsider by Richard Wright. I have a book on Tony Morrison. Tony Morrison. Jim Morrison. Right? Um, okay. Since I'm not going to really cover it, let's not pretend to do a thorough job okay last 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 one shutting off for now
here we go coming to the coming to a close on the second bookshelf in my room I have one third one a small one it's behind me uh, first book uh, a Jane Austen three complete novels Sense and Sensibilia Pride and Prejudice and Emma okay and I, and I have the, I have persuasion earlier I showed you Mm, the Texas Rangers, A Century of Frontier Defense by Walter Prescott Webb. Foreword by Lyndon B. Johnson. Wow. The? The Lyndon B. Johnson? Oh, my voice just went up an octave. Okay, next. The Arts and Letters by Edmund White. Another essayist. This is Judah Al-Harizi's The Book of Takemoni. Jewish Tales from Medieval Spain. Uh, translated and explicated by David Sima Segal. Okay, let's see if I can explain this book. I'm not gonna. I'm not very articulate, if you haven't noticed, but I'm gonna give it a try. This book is rhymed verse. It's all rhymed verse. We're talking about over 300 pages of rhymed verse. You gotta let that sink in. Okay. Okay, not only is it all rhymed verse, and it's good rhymed verse. It's good rhymed verse. This story is a good story. Um, so, at the time of, of the telling of this book, Arabic rules, rules, rules the land. Arabic is the language that all the great poets, all the great authors are using, because it's a beautiful language. It's a it's a strong, robust, expressive language, and it holds it hold it's 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 esteemed as like the superior language above hebrew okay so in this story someone is tasked to defend hebrew to champion hebrew and to put literature out there that's as good if not better than what's being put out there in arabic so that's what this story is about. This story is about uh, Hebrew being championed and shown to be a very robust and expressive language. And it's all in rhyme verse. I want to read you the first. I want to read you the first chapter, but I would not do it justice because my reading is kind of shit. Okay, Dostoevsky's *The Possessed* hard copy. I picked this up really cheap. I couldn't pass it up. It was too good. Too good a copy. Not to have Thomas Hardy, Far From the Maddening Crowd. Sorry, right. I always say that. It's Far From the Madding Crowd. People love this book. I haven't read it yet. I, I almost started it today, as a matter of fact. But, yeah, uh, I'm going to get to it soon. Okay, more uh, stuff keeps falling down here. Let's see. Okay, this is David Foster Wallace. Uh, rest in peace, David Foster Wallace. It's supposedly fun thing I'll never do again. <clears throat> okay. I never got on the Foster Wallace train. Like, he's hyped as some super profound intellectual pseudo-philosopher. Maybe real philosopher, I don't know. And, you know, he had a cult following. I never quite bought into all that. Hmm. I'm not saying he's a fraud. No, not by any means. But I'm just saying, when I read him, he doesn't sound as deep to me as his reputation uh, would have you believe. That's it. And I hope that's not too harsh for his fans and fanboys. Consider the Lobster, David Foster Wallace. Okay. Uh, which reminds me of uh, Jordan Peterson. Now, Jordan Peterson, to me, was an, is an intellectual. And, and, and above David Foster Wallace, by the way. But he's a real deal. I heard somebody on the internet call Foster, I mean, Peterson a, a, fake, into, a, fake, into, a fake intellectual, a faux intellectual, a mountebank. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. How can, you, how can you make a video and put your face out there and called 
and call David P I mean Jordan Peterson a fake a fake intellectual. Uh, Jesus, have you heard the man? Have you read his books? Have you heard Maps of Meaning? I mean, have you read Maps of Meaning? Have you read even the Twelve Rules? Oh, that's no fake intellectual. Anyway, another Foster Wallace. This is Water. Uh, read him. I I, rec I recommend you read Foster Wallace. You might really really like him. I kind of like him, but I don't love him. Henry James. Now there's a man worth everyone's admiration. This is a biography by Lewis Auchincloss, right? In Auchincloss, I, we had the other book earlier where it's his short stories. So Auchincloss is an author worth reading also. Vladimir Nabokov, Lectures on Russian Literature. Mm, yeah, Nabokov, obviously Russian himself. Uh, this is on Chekhov, Dostoevsky, Gogol, Gorky, Tolstoy, and Turgenev. Okay. Yeah, Nabokov's worth listening to. I'm not saying I agree with everything he says on these authors, but he's worth listening to on these authors. Uh, lectures on literature. Austin, Dickens, Flaubert, Joyce, Kafka, Proust, and Stevenson. I haven't done any Stevenson reading. Uh, yeah, I can honestly just say that I don't remember any book that I've read by Stevenson or anything that i read by Stevenson. Reading Chekhov, A Critical Journey by Janet Malcolm. Uh, interesting take, another... Right. I, 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 when it comes to literature, I, I, I always like to run to, secondary, to, to like uh, sources on like on, on what they have to say. Right. I'm a firm believer in reading the books by yourselves, and you know, struggling through understanding the books on your own, and contemplating what you've read, discussing with others what you've read. But it'd be very hard, like, to get other very highly intelligent, very deep, profound, or maybe even just very insightful and clever takes than that you'll find in these books by these very well-read um, authors. Okay, so yeah, I like to get different takes, and sometimes, you know, you, 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 you take parts of one author and another part of another author. As long as you can make a coherent theory, then you can have your own theory, and that's what you should do anyway. Right, you should you should take what you learn and take what you read and then synthesize it, synthesize it into your own uh, idiosyncratic view. Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. Uh, I haven't read this, but I want to. Lord Jem by Conrad. Right, he also wrote Nostromo. Uh, the Canterbury Tales. I have another. This is another trans book translation. Uh, Moby Dick, Herman Melville. Uh, so these are my Norton critical editions, right? So they have a lot of like footnotes and commentaries, uh, which I find helpful. But I don't usually get Norton, but I picked these up on eBay. Like I, I found a lot for really cheap. I mean, uh, not a lot like A L O T, but like a, a pack, a set. Hamlet, William Shakespeare. This is a Norton Critical Edition, also NCE, normally referred to. Mm. The Communist Manifesto, right, Karl Marx. <clears throat> Classical versus Mo Modern Education by C.S. Lewis. Alfred Nord Whitehead. Whitehead's not much read as a philosopher anymore. I think he's best known for his the the book the Principia Mathematica. I, I don't know what the title was exactly uh, that he did with uh, Bertrand Russell. The Aims of Education. Okay. This is one of my favorite little books. Uh, not in the whole like it's 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 a good it's it's a good book. I like this book. I don't know if you've checked it out. A Reader's Manifesto by B. R. Myers. Uh, basically, he takes modern writers to task for being shit writers comparing them to the greats comparing to them like to like bellows comparing them to henry james comparing them to nabokov and they just pale in comparison right the don delilos of the world pale in comparison uh, this is a book by geech providence and evil i'm starting to get into my catholic reading my christian theology reading anyway that's a good book the Three Plays of Euripides, Alcestis, or Alcestis, I don't know, Medea and Bacchae. 
This is a Paul Roche, famous translator. Okay, and finally, well, not finally, because I'm going to cover the, some of the other books. This is uh, Gibbons, The History of the Fall or the Decline of the Roman Empire. The, what's the official title? The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah, so this is an eight-book series. This is a folio edition. Um, the more I read on history, the more I read of different authors about this time period, and, of course, they've all read Gibbon. <clears throat> The more I'm getting the fact that Gibbon was biased against the church. And the church played a major role. So if, if you have an author who's biased against the church, you're going to get kind of a skewed perspective on what really happened. Mm. But I think it, it's not terribly biased, right? It's not like he, he, it's not like he completely like just attacks the church un, like unfairly. So this, I think this is probably still worthwhile reading. So I'll probably read it, and that's why I keep it. Okay, let's look at the last few things on here, uh, just because they're, they're showing. I have George Sansom's The History of Japan to 1334. I have a book on the Incas by Jeff Mix. I have The Glass Castle by Janet Walls. Um, what is this? Is this something I want to talk about? Yes, this is Renaissance in Italy by Jacob Burkhardt. Burkhardt is a famous uh, writer. Uh, okay, that's about it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. I have one more bookcase in my room. Um, I'm not going to cover it today. It's small. Mm, that's what she said. All right. Leave your comments. Um, I don't know. Say what you want to say. I'll read it. I'll comment. All right. Thanks. Bye.